Today I'm building a LEGO fantasy world with quests, battles, and magical floating islands, topping it all off with a massive flying castle, if I can get it to work. But first we need some minifigures to populate this world, so let's create our character. This is the Falconer, leader of the Black Falcon team, who the comet's named Scarlet. She's equipped with a bow and arrow to fend off the enemy army of orcs that we'll make later, and I want to build her a castle stronghold to defend. Except the orcs are completely taking over the ground, so the only safe place to go is up. Scarlet wants to take to the skies, and somehow have her castle fly above the land. But obviously this is not Minecraft, and we have to deal with that pesky thing called gravity. So Scarlet is embarking on a quest to discover eight ways to make LEGO float. She'll be leveling up her skills as she defeats enemies, learns new abilities, and adds additional members to her party, kind of like a video game, and we'll take everything we learned to hopefully make her castle fly at the end. But level one is a tutorial. Scarlet needs to train her pet falcon, Violet, in this obstacle course I built. She can fly through these rings no problem, but what if we light this one on fire? No, just kidding. Scarlet uses Violet's favorite snack to reward her, so I designed this small tower we'll probably reuse in the floating castle, where Scarlet can toss it up for her to catch. And for the final test, she has Violet catch her so the two can gracefully glide to the ground. But if you ever wonder what these clear sticks I use all the time are for, they're super useful for moving minifigures or birds around on camera without getting my grubby little fingers in the way of everything, and they can be used to make stuff float. Just connect it to something solid, and boom, you can barely tell it's there. If you use too many, they start to sag slightly, but I built the first of eight floating sky islands, and suspended it just above the tower, where Violet was able to retrieve their first map fragment, leveling us up. Meanwhile, down in the ruins of a once great civilization, the orcs started assembling their army. This is their leader, the highly esteemed General Greg, I mean Grog, and he means business. As the orcs grow their forces and take over more and more of the map, they'll be setting up new outposts like this one, with two towers connected by this rope bridge that's very sturdy, a campfire to cook marshmallows in, and these log walls along the outside. They've even got these training dummies to practice their conquest, which will only get worse Worse unless Scarlet can stop them. The map says to cross the river, so she caught a ride on a fisherman named Wendell's fishing boat by agreeing to work for him. Cause we all know the best part of video games is the fishing mini game. Oh, so much fun. But we can actually use fishing line to make Lego float by just hanging it from the ceiling. I've done this with Joe's spaceship and Charlotte's dragon in the past, and it's always a huge hassle, but this second floating island was relatively easy to situate. Relative. But I eventually got it working and even hung some fishermen that look like they're jumping out of the water. And one of them had the next map fragment in his mouth, allowing Scarlet to level up. But good thing they actually needed to go this way. This is where I'm building what's known as the Tree of Ancients. This twisty old trunk said to have mystical time-bending properties. And it can talk. My name is Morgan Treeman. It took me forever to get all the branches right, but they hold the secret to our next levitation trick. Don't touch that! This is Ebenezer the Wizard, who is joining our party. Due to his special connection with the tree, he's the only one who can touch its branches without being affected. He's gonna juggle them while I build the third sky island that I can make levitate. You know, I'm something of a wizard myself. Kind of. Basically, we can use these branches to support the island from behind, except that kind of blocks our view of the tree. Get the trash away from me. So we'll just support it from below instead. Where an orc jumped down and ambushed them. Scarlet and Ebenezer made quick work of it but there's more where that came from. We need to start building Scarlet's castle now. So I set my wallet on fire and bought the Lion's Knight Castle set. This thing is incredible, and it fits perfectly into the layout, with so many peasants to populate the village we'll be building, knights, nobles, Ebenezer's wizard friend Magisto, and so much more. It's up to Scarlet to protect all these people from the orcs, who are bringing out the big guns. They made a catapult to fling rocks over the river. Until Ebenezer stopped time and left it floating in the air. Well, that was easy. A really cheaty way to give the illusion of levitation is just to drop something and take a picture of it before it hits the ground. This works with rocks, bricks, minifigures, spaghetti, and even castles. Look at that, it's floating. <laughs> We'll see the consequences of that decision later on, but for now the next map fragment is leading them back across the river. They're gonna have to infiltrate the orcs base without getting caught. So Wendell snuck them over, where the orcs had built a mine shaft, digging some strange greenish crystals out of the cliffside. Or technically these ones are called goblins, and they're testing which minerals can cause the most destruction. Normal rocks didn't do it, and these crystals have potential, but they also mined up some magnetic rocks that we could use to make our next sky island float. Magnets attract and repel each other, so if you can strain them with something like a pencil, the top one can actually float. This is so fun to play around with. It doesn't float very high off the ground, mind you, but it allowed Scarlet and Ebenezer to escape up the cliff after Grog's army had spotted them. They loaded a net into the catapult to capture them, but it ended up catching someone else. This is Garrett, a time traveler from the future. They probably should rescue him, but first, 
No, first Scarlet wants to go on a side quest back to the village. Sorry, not yet. I built a simple little smithing shop with a water wheel powering the furnace for Clint the blacksmith to forge weapons, armor, and this ring that he really needs to destroy for some reason. So he tasks Scarlet and company to climb up the volcano and throw it in. But they had to battle a ton of orcs on the way who had set up camp and this bald guy with respiratory issues was there. It was a whole thing. But eventually they succeeded and unlocked the next secret to flotation. I'm using a hair dryer to blow hot air out of the volcano, which Lego boulder pieces like this can float in. A leaf blower also works, but maybe a bit too well, so we'll just save that for the throw test. Or even better, the throw test. You know, honestly, the damage wasn't too bad. Only a few pieces actually broke. I was able to grab our party members, save the citizens for later, and use all these pieces to build my own custom gravity-defying castle. But first, I'm building a bridge across the river to give poor Wendell a break. It'll be guarded by Scarlet's most trusted soldiers, while they go rescue Garrett, who's locked up tight in this cage, bound by tons of chains, which gives me an idea. You can use Lego chains to create this thing called a tensegrity structure, which uses science to make the top part float. It's kind of mesmerizing. The next floating island was so mesmerizing that it distracted the orcs long enough for Ebenezer to pick the locks and free Garrett, who is going to join our party until he can get his time machine back. They had to answer a riddle from the troll under the bridge to get back across. Comment below if you know the answer. But I added this new tailor's shop to the village where Garrett changed into his new drip, a farmhouse where a poor farmer struggled to sell any of his produce, and a tavern where a bard named John Murphy plays his loot. We can connect all these buildings together with a simple pathway, plant some plants, and pop in as many villagers as we can fit. The leftovers can help us decorate the tavern's roof in ye old amputation sensation. Using hands as thatch detailing works concerningly well, but while we were forcibly removing them, the orcs have been experimenting with the time machine they stole, taking it to who knows when. They kept bringing back random things like a baby dinosaur, balloons, a robot butler, this guy named Fred, and a 1950s suburban home? Hold on. Wait, no, no, no. Man. I don't have enough helium balloons to lift the entire house like my friend Tommy did, but we can build a sky island that's just light enough to float straight up to the ceiling. This is my favorite island we've done. But while Scarlet was distracted trying to shoot them down for some reason, the orcs laid siege to the village. After all this time training and learning how best to protect these people, we're too late. Or are we? Ebenezer used all he had left to stop time once more, but he can only hold them off for 24 hours. That gives us very little time to build this castle for them to escape. Do. So using the parts from earlier and every technique Scarlet learned, I got to work creating the final sky island for the castle to sit upon. With two towers in front on either side of the drawbridge entrance, I built the walls back to this little house section and the thickest tower right here. We have a waterfall flowing onto this side and a tree with its roots dangling down the other. There's a big courtyard inside with plenty of room for the villagers to wait out the siege, but first we gotta get this thing airborne. It's too heavy to be supported by magnets or chains and we don't want a repeat of the last castle. So I stacked up clear bricks to raise it up on stilts like this, stabilize the wobbly with fishing lines strung from the ceiling, and the hairdryer was there for moral support. Our castle is finally flying, and just in time too. Violet flew Ebenezer and the rest of the villagers to safety while Scarlet and Garrett fended off the orcs long enough to escape themselves. The knights may have lost control of the orc-infested ground today, but they unlocked the secret of the skies that will hopefully help them reclaim their village in the future. But for now it's time for Garrett to drop into his next adventure.